Hello friends, welcome back. Uh, it's been a while since I've had a chance to do a video for you, so here we go. Uh, today we'll be looking at the Knob Creek 18-year-old. So this is a limited edition commemorating the 30th anniversary of Knob Creek. Uh, historically, Knob Creek limited editions have not been the most sought-after bourbons. Uh, I you know, recall the 2001 limited edition, uh, which was released in 2016. That was 14-year-old bourbon, and uh, it really languished on, on the shelves, was not a lot of enthusiasm for that one. I, I think I eventually picked up a bottle for $30 off the $130 asking price, um, but times have changed and now the days of limited editions just sitting around seem to, to be gone. Uh, and indeed there's been a lot of fanfare around this expression and around Knob Creek generally. I think, you know, a few years back they had a string of store picks in the kind of mid-teens age range that really impressed people, particularly uh, people that look for a woodier profile on their bourbons, which I, I tend to not like as much. Uh, and age is, is something to consider with this one. So as I said, it's, it's the 18-year-old expression, and um, I uh, have uh, ha heard a lot of really, really enthusiastic positive commentary about this one. People seem to really like it, people that I respect. So um, I was uh, graced with a sample of this by Matt Cusick. So thank you, Matt, for uh, dropping that off. And I'm just going to give you my first impressions here. Uh, not, not a super formal review, but just wanted to let you know what I, what I think about this one a little bit. So here you go. You can see... You can see there it's this beautiful kind of dark brownish, orangey, golden color. Um, you know, funny enough, I, I, I tend to find that beam whiskeys tend to not be as dark as some of the comparably aged expressions from, from other uh, other distilleries. I haven't tested that scientifically, but it's just my impression. And I'll tell you what, right out of the right out of the glass, this just jumps out with the, like the richest kind of like, um, I want to say like chocolate covered fruitiness. So, you know, if you ever have dried fruit covered in chocolate, dried cherries or apricots, this is super yummy. Uh, just, just like really, I just want to just dive nose first right into this glass because there's there's a little bit of a woody accent. I mean, it comes more in the form of like a, a cinnamon or you know maybe a little little spiciness or some nutmeg there. But um, you know, just just a deft touch. And as I said, you know, the concern here is that um, all that time in the barrel is going to have created a uh, a wood forward flavor profile. And you know, people people talk about sucking on a stave, and that's just you know that that's a that's a form of imbalance that's that's not something desirable in bourbon. So, but just based on the nose, this doesn't have any of that at all. It's got some got some beautiful flavors actually toward the top end of the register. It's got some uh, floral notes in here, maybe some maybe some chewing gum or candy, just some some real nice light sweetness. So, yeah, and, and then there's some there's some darker notes too. There's some maybe annas or, or varnish. You know, some of that that stuff toward the darker end of the of the register. But you know, as I as I think about this. Just going on the nose alone, it, it doesn't doesn't come across as um, as being uh, overly overly wood influenced. But we'll we'll see what happens on the palate here now as I uh, as I take a sip. But um, man, this is just so much fun to sniff. I just it's got such an appealing. You know, I lo I love it when the bourbon just just leaps right into your nose out of out of the glass or out of the bottle. And this is this is certainly one of those. So uh, let's see what we think as I as I sip it here. Yeah. Um, tart, a little bit astringent, a little bit tannic at the very front of the mouth. Um, you know, honestly, it feels a bit thin, and uh, I should have said this before, but this is this is 100 proof, 50% ABV here, um, which is, you know, it's not the top of the Knob Creek range. That's that's 120 proof uh, for, for some of those bottlings. Um, you know, look, 50 proof is, is generally thought of to be a, a good, very adequate bottling strength. Um, mm. So as I roll this around in the mouth a little more, I get, yeah, again, more of a tendency towards the lighter end of the, of the spectrum. There's not, there's not a whole ton of, um, not a whole ton of like the, the darker stuff or even, even like the nuts that I typically associate with Jim Beam. So, you know, by, by contrast, this has a lot more of that, that, uh, sweet and floral and, and fruity aspect to it in the mouth. Yeah, the wood is the wood is subdued. Again, if if anything, I, I get it not in the sense of like that that real intense woodiness, or or even you know can border into like a smokiness, like um like a campfire smoke. Rather, it's you know in in this case, um, there's a little little bit of little bit of tanicness, a little bit of astringency, like I said, but mm. yeah, and then through the finish, just more more of that fruit again in, in kind of tartar form, carrying on. I get some accents of like mocha or fudge, a little bit of that richer kind of chocolatey sweetness. This finish is relatively, um, relatively light and lean. You know, it's it's not. Um, this is certainly not the most full-bodied Knob Creek uh, expression that I've 
that I've ever had in my life. Mm. Yeah. Some raisins, maybe. It's um it's subtle. I mean it's it's not it's not like the bruiser of the 120 proof knob creek that, that you get. Um it's it's nice. I, I don't I'm not absolutely in love with this. I got some friends that are, and God bless them, and I will leave bottles on the shelves for them, I think. Particularly the, so SRP for this was 170 bucks per the press release. Um, I have not seen it yet. I've heard reports that this is being marked up to 200, 220, 250 maybe. It, it's it's not it's not 200 bucks worth of bourbon for me. I'm glad I got to try it. Um, it's it's interesting. It's got some it's got some interesting nuances. Um, it is uh, maybe maybe if you don't really love the full the full bodied very very brusque very um, you know kind of muscular knob creek profile maybe this one is is more for you. Uh, for me, it's a little bit lean. I like I like my bourbons to be a little more plump, um, a little little you know more of the the rich kind of um, generously sweet fruitiness. This fruitiness in here, as I said, I keep going back to um, you know it's, it's it's acidic. It's a little bit sour. It's a little bit tannic. It's actually, you know, it tastes like a very old style of whiskey. So this reminds me more of like maybe some dusty whiskeys that um, I might have tried from from years past, you know, from um, National Distillers among among others. But um, you know, as I said, it's a it's a it's a limited edition. It's gonna be hard to find. It comes with a price. You know, for me, um, you know, this would be maybe on the on the malt scale. And I'm not I'm not rating this formally. I'm just kind of thinking through. My thoughts on this: this would be maybe maybe a five, maybe a four. Good, again, depending on depending on what kind of what kind of profile you like. As you can see behind me, I got a whole big big rack of, of Elijah Craig barrel proof there, and that, that's that's really the, the kind of the, the bourbon that uh, tickles my fancy. It's that that super full bodied, overwhelming. Um, this is this is different entirely. It's a nice little sipper. It is. Um, it's not bad bourbon. It's not flawed in any way. Um, again, the wood has not become overly dominant in a way I think that, that a lot of people feared. Um, I do I do sympathize a little bit with the people that. That objected to the fifty percent ABV, particularly for the price. You know, I think that that um, it would have been interested to see this uh, this uh, presented at barrel proof because it does, I think, suffer a little bit texturally from um, you know just at points again front of the mouth. It feels feels a little bit thin. But um, so those are my thoughts. I uh, appreciate you guys having asked for uh, for this, and I'm happy to have the opportunity to share this with you again. Uh, I will uh, now that I'm in more scenic environs. Everybody used to complain about the the drabness of my background when I was. Uh, filming these in my office, so hopefully that's that's more visually appealing to you all. But um, hope to get into some more of these soon. For uh, you know, just just have some fun with it, and um, please let me know what you think. Uh, did I get this right? Did I get this wrong? Uh, you know, what what were your impressions of this one? If you've had the opportunity to taste it. But um, thanks to Matt again for the sample, and thanks to you all for uh, sharing a couple minutes with me on this one. So cheers, and I will see you next time. <laughs>